Hi, George here. And I thought it would be fun today to see how the new Photoshop Elements 2026 compares to older versions. So today we're diving into two game-changing features. By the way, if you want a complete A to Z training on every facet of the new 2026 software, I've linked my full course in the description below. But first, let's get into the best new tools. Now I have here a thumbnail from a video I did years ago. This actually is the most popular video I have on YouTube for Photoshop Elements. It has over a quarter of a million views. It's done very, very well. But this was made back before we even had content aware fill. So removing people in the background, removing this person over here, it took a lot of careful selections. It took a lot of clone stamp work. And it took me about 40 minutes to actually demonstrate this whole video. Let's now see how that compares to the new Photoshop Elements 2026. Let's just get this out of the way. Here we go. Here is the original photo. What I want to do is remove these people back here, remove the people back there, take out the seat and steering wheel, and of course, take out this person right behind here. Let's say we can do this here in this new version. I'll just maximize the image. There we go. So let's go over here, left-hand side, click on this button right there in the Enhance section. That's the Remove tool. Now I'm gonna use this new feature right down here, Find People in the Background. Click on that, and let's let Photoshop Elements 2026 analyze this picture and find everybody in the background there, hopefully. We'll see how well this does. There we go. It found them and the reflections. That's good. It found these. It missed the reflection right down here. So I'll just go ahead and brush that in. There may be somebody right over here. I'll just click on that. Okay, there we are. Let's click on Done. And we'll see how well this works. Let us have Photoshop Elements figure this out and remove those people. There we go. And that's absolutely perfect. So that much is a whole lot easier. As you can see, it took just a few seconds to remove those people. And that's how you can use that powerful new Remove Background People feature to dramatically improve your workflow in Elements 2026. Now that one tool is a game changer, but if you're like most people, you still have to jump between five or six different panels just to finish one complete edit. Knowing which tools to use, when and how to combine them into a smooth, complete workflow is what separates the casual user from the confident editor. And that is the exact process I teach inside my full Photoshop Elements course. It walks you through every major tool and technique step-by-step. Step. If you're ready to master the complete Elements experience, I put the link right at the top of the description below. Now let's do the harder stuff. That's this boat in the foreground here, this engine over here, and this guy in the back. For this, we'll go over here to the Generative AI. We'll click on the Insert Object. That brush size is too big. The only complaint I have about this tool so far is that the brush size slicker down here is very hard to use. You can see it goes way up to a huge number there. And I normally work on lower sizes down here. So it's kind of hard to select a good lower size. If you use the left square bracket and right square bracket keys, that's where they're not working for you. It sometimes works for me, but most of the time that doesn't. So I have this at 101 pixels. That should be okay. And then simply brush over anything that you want to remove, like this guy right here. And I'll come in against this girl here, just kind of close. I don't like using brush tools for making selections for real delicate areas or critical areas. Like up in there, I can't reach that. So let's bring our brush size down a bit smaller. Get in there closer. There we go. That's better. So I prefer to have a different tool for this or be able to make a selection first and then do this. But we can work with this. Now here we have the fishing rod and a bit of his chin here and his nose right here. I'm being real careful about this, but I think that the generative AI can take care of this without any real issues. I think it'll figure that out. And let's go over here and just come around in the hair. There we go. And we'll come back and we'll fill this whole area in once I have this marked out. Okay, let's go for a larger brush size again. 140 is way too big. Get back down to about 100. There we go. That's a pretty good size for this. And I can just fill this area in. There we go. And clean this up over here. This actually is a lot faster than the selection I made last time where I used the polygonal lasso tool to do a real careful, very tight selection. The generative AI should be able to clean up the selection as it goes. So I can be real close. This kind of helps things out, but it should be able to find edges and take care of that without any real issues. Okay, get this boat in here. That's fine. Let's go ahead now and give this a description. Now the way this works is you type in what you want to see. You don't type in directions, just type in what you want to see. So we have a girl who's fishing on a peaceful lake. That should do it. Hit the generate and let's see how it handles this part of the process. There's a little bit of a wait time on these generative fill movements, but 
It's not that bad. It's really just a few seconds, 15 or 20 seconds, and that normally takes care of that. It depends upon what you're asking for, how much it has to analyze, and so forth. And there we go. Almost perfect. It missed a spot right there. That's kind of weird. But we have four options down here. Let's check our other options. Second option is a whole lot better. Is our third option. And our fourth option. I am noticing one thing. Her ear is changing each time in here. It's having a hard time with that ear. Let's check the original. It's right in behind that. So I'll find the one with the best ear. If this one works out pretty well. Now, that's not very good right here. But I can easily go back and clean that up. Just taking that piece out from the original. But I think this is absolutely perfect. It took care of that edge in here. Did a real nice job filling in that area with the background. Just a couple little issues. The ear and this little bit right here. Let's take care of that. I'll make a layer mask on this layer. Let's convert our color here to black. Over here to the paintbrush. And in here I can use the right square bracket to bring my brush size up a little bit. And I'm just going to paint right over that. And I'm re-showing what was underneath. So there we go. And that's now fixed. It was that easy to fix that. Okay, that's great. Working very easy here. Now, one more thing I want to do is let's just take us a bit further. Let's put in a fishing lure hanging over here. Something which I didn't do before, but we'll go ahead and do that now. Now, one thing about this, to use the generative AI tool, the layer you're on has to be a simplified layer. This is a smart layer right here with a layer mask. So I'm going to right click on the name over here and let's simplify the layer. So it's no longer a smart object layer. Let's now come down here again, we're on the insert object. I need to add in a place for what we want to insert into the picture. And whatever you do, it's going to be using that whole area. So for a thin or a small lure, I want to bring my size down here. I can't type in a size. I wish I could. That would be a nice little addition here. But this is pretty good. That's good enough. Okay, I want to come in right down from about here. I'll put straight down. Kind of straight down right to here. And then let's just type in a fishing lure. And see what we get. Click on generate. And again, this will give us four choices on this. And we'll see how well this works out. Okay, there we go. There's one. Let's try our next one down here. That's pretty good. I like that one. That's a bit large. Let's try our next one down here. That's not too bad. I think I like this small one here the best. This looks the most natural. Maybe it's a little bit on the bright side, but I could adjust that pretty well. And again, that's something which I didn't do on the previous one. So this whole thing really took just a few minutes, even with all of my discussing and talking in here. So you can see how these new tools are really advancing the abilities here inside of Photoshop Elements 2026. Now this generative fill, each one of those moves I did took one generative credit and you get 25 free a month with Photoshop Elements. You can do a subscription where you get 2,000 a month for only $10. And if you like this tool, then that's a great way to go. Otherwise, I spent two credits in here for doing this. One credit for the removal of the guy here in the engine and the bit of the boat. And then one credit for this. The background stuff there, the find and remove background people, that doesn't cost any credits. So you can do all that you want in an image. It's this larger stuff that uses the generative AI that costs the credits. But there you go. You can see just exactly how much Photoshop Elements is now improved with this new generative AI. And I think it's a phenomenal improvement. And of course, AI is going to be taking over everything. We're going to have to be learning how to use this. But in the end, for photo retouch, I think it's a great tool. There'll still be a lot of things you want to do with manual photo retouching. For instance, on this one, I didn't have any choice of exactly what was placed into this area. It gave me the right kind of stuff, but I couldn't choose it exactly. I couldn't carefully solve that ear over here. I had to choose the right picture on that ear. If it didn't have a good ear, I'd have to try it again. And I would have to go out and find a picture of a lure to do this. This is actually brand new. It's a completely created imagery here inside of Photoshop Elements that isn't taken from a photograph anyplace. So if I wanted a specific lure, I still have to go back and find a picture of that and then edit that in as I would normally edit in an object into a photograph. So AI is not going to be taking over all the jobs, but it really helps out on a lot of these things that really should be a lot simpler. And they are now simpler because of the generative AI. So there you have it. The new Photoshop Elements 2026 is powerful. But let's be honest, trying to learn it all by yourself can be frustrating. That's why I designed my comprehensive Photoshop Elements Master Course. It's the only resource you need to master every feature from the basics to all the new 2026 AI tools. Stop wasting time clicking around in YouTube and start creating with confidence. Click on the link in the description or the pinned comment to enroll and get instant access today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate that. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.